Hey guys, today we're going to talk about a true backpacker, the Ed Gun Leshy. So the Leshy we saw last year at IWA Germany and it sparked my attention as well as everybody else's, namely because it's like nothing else on the market right now. It is, well this one is a 25 caliber, you can also get it in 22 caliber, both are around 30, 35 foot pounds. The action breaks like that. And let me get closer to you. So what you got here is a pre-charged pneumatic with the cylinder back here. So the hammer is in this part right here and it strikes the valve in front of the air cylinder. That lets air straight line through the barrel. About a five inch big old shroud on the end here. This is integrated. And when I first saw it, I think to myself, well, that kind of sucks. You can't add any more moderation to it, but you don't need it. So no sweat there. You don't need to put anything more on this. This gun is absolutely backyard friendly. So when you cock this thing, you, you break it back here, right about there it cocks. And then it keeps coming around and it hits the safety right here and that engages the safety automatically if you come all the way. So when you go back, now you have to take the safety off to shoot the gun. You guys know how, how I kind of feel about automatic safeties, and if you don't, I'll tell you, I usually don't like them one bit. <laughs> I always forget, especially on the brake barrels, when you, you break that, bring it back up, get that bird in your sights, and then, duh. But because of the positioning on this, right on the index finger right there, it was no big deal at all. I quickly got used to it, and. It's an octagon here, which adds to the cool factor, I guess. And it, the gun's really sturdy. You can grab it here uh, and grab it back here. I showed you that at, at IWA. And it's one of the things I like about this thing is when you collapse it, chuck it in your backpack, uh, you really don't have to sweat much other than is gunk getting around here. You probably want to be a little careful of that. So what I like about the gun first, isn't that how reviews are supposed to go? First we say what we like, then we say what we don't like to give ourselves more credit. <laughs> Well, here's what I like about it. Um, the shot count is pretty damn amazing, given that this is all the bigger that the air cylinder is. You got a pressure gauge down here on the end. The cylinder, I don't know what it holds. It's gotta be like less than 100 uh, cc's. Given what it holds, 20 shots, 20 good, usable, consistent shots. Yeah, that's pretty solid. The scope I have on here is not one I would normally pick. This is an MTC Viper Connect. And what makes a scope unique is it's massive field of view and I'm talking massive we're gonna fill some shots in a bit and through them shots you will not actually get to see the full field of view on the scope and the reason why is because no camera has a lens capable of ga capturing that luckily you do it's attached to your head and you have to get your eye dang close I mean like remove the sunglasses close to this thing in order to get that some guys don't like that and of course, you would never want this for a center fire rifle. You go home with a black eye. Uh, but for an air rifle that has no recoil, it fits the bill well for something like this. I mean, you can see the whole damn field, especially if you dial it down to three power, it's nuts. Um, actually at home, I did a little experiment to show you guys what this would look like looking through the scope. So here's what it looks like with the camera attached. And with the camera attached, it just looks like your standard scope, crosshairs in the center. But what you don't see looking through that scope because of the limitations of the camera is the, all the space around that reticle. I actually use that camera that I'm filming with to show that. And the reason I know it actually is what it is is because when I looked through the scope, I picked the landmark of that light pole and this little thingy over here on the right hand side. So I know I could see that through the scope. And so I showed you that through the camera. So the scope is actually a ton like the gun, in my opinion, is that it's, it's, a, it's a niche product. It's made thinking outside the box. It's made thinking differently. And so just like the gun, it is not gonna be for everyone, but those who do like it are going to love it. If you do buy this Viper Connect scope, they made one with like a 30 inch bell here on the end. And that was because a lot of people were griping. They didn't like the look of this kind of straight line thing. I'm telling you, do not get that one. It's foolish because in almost all cases, you'll have to double mount the front of it. And if you have that bell piece on here, you're gonna limit yourself considerably 
as to where you have to put your scope mounts. It's just as good as the other one. I've looked through them both. Do not bother with aesthetics. Stick with the one that makes sense. So I've been using it now, oh, about maybe two or three months. And where the gun excels, admittedly, is in the places where you can't take a traditional rifle. Uh, at first I took it out and I just used it everywhere just because I was so high on, you know, just this unique looking little pistol. But in time, reaching out to those 40, 50 yard shots, when I tried using this, I missed a few times, more than I'm used to and more than I'm comfortable with. So I would go back to my traditional rifle on those shots. So is this a gun for someone looking for a first PCP? Heck no. No way, Jose. It's niche. It's space. It's in between the rifle and the pistol with the convenience of a pistol and the power of about 70% mm, of a rifle. Accuracy, 70% of a rifle. Some good news. The Atlas Bipod fits right here on this piece of Picatinny. Uh, the bad news is that, I'm gonna get closer to show you this. When you cock it, you can see it just clears that. That's all very nice, but it just barely makes contact with the bipod every single time. So I don't know if you wanna put a piece of foam in there or what, but I'll show you what happens. See that? I got a little white mark there uh, from coming around. That's from about uh, maybe 40 or 50 shots without me realizing what was actually happening. That said, it does look pretty cool and it works very well. So that's a lot of guys' checklist. Uh, decent shot count, accurate, quiet, Tiny, that should be your whole checklist, right? Well, there are a few things um, that you should be mindful of before you buy it. I wouldn't call them deal breakers by any stretch, but you're gonna wanna know about them. So the trigger, eh, I'm pretty much used to a very nice two-stage trigger on all my guns by now. And this gun doesn't have it. It's got a single stage. It is very, very soft, but it creeps a little bit, then goes off. So it kinda creeps about I don't know, maybe a quarter inch and then fires. It's consistent, it shoots at the same spot every time, but if you're a trigger snob, uh, you're not gonna dig this one. Everybody wants to know like how it shoulders and how it holds. It shoulders and holds like you think it would. It's a smaller gun, a little unwieldy, not great off the bench. This is not made for you to be shooting groups. This is made for you to be greasing rabbits at 30 yards. That's what the gun should be used for. I did choose a 25, uh, namely because I like to kill critters and 25 just hits harder. If my primary target was pest birds, uh, grackles, starlings, I'd probably opt for the 22 instead because you can reach out a little bit further because um, the trajectory is better. I wanted to kill rabbits and squirrels at 30 yards, so I took the 25. So, does this have a place in my cabinet permanently? It does, and I'll tell you why. It's because of what I alluded to earlier it does something that my rifles can't do. Because if I'm backpacking or canoeing down the river or something like that, and I wanna bring something with, obviously a, a rifle is <laughs> not coming with. Uh, and a pistol, I'm horrible at shooting them, and they have low shot count and even slower shot, not as accurate. So I look at this in a scenario where you would want to reach for a pistol but want something better. All right, let's take some shots. It's a little bit uh, breezy here today, not too bad. When I woke up this morning, a uh, flag was limper than a 10 pound Not appropriate. <laughs> uh, there was no wind at all this morning and now there's a bit of a breeze, nothing too major. We're gonna set our target out at 50 yards, take 10 shots with it, and I'll show you what you can expect. All right, now a few quickies. <laughs> Using just my eye. Oh, you need a camera down there. <laughs> Where's my phone? All right.
wind has really died down now. It's a perfect time to rattle off tan as quick as I can. And open my mouth. Five. Yeah, hear that wind? Just goes to show you how much you can push it. Um, we had dead wind for the first five shots. That sixth one, it came up. I think you could probably hear it when it did. It's still blowing. We're gonna go ahead and keep shooting. Not for groups anymore, but, just, but to see. Yeah, to see how much it can push. And it's pushing it even more now. This is about, a, feels like about a, maybe a seven or eight mile an hour wind. Um, so be aware of that. It's about a two inch push at 50 yards. That was the seventh or eighth shot. So consider those first five, the group, and then these are kind of giving you an idea of what it would do in a wind. Yeah, starts blowing around and gusting and moving considerably. Uh, yeah. So, um, something to think about. As a comparison, I'm gonna get out my impact, 25. You guys have seen what that can do um, in no wind, so I'm gonna show you what it can do in this wind, uh, just so you have kind of a litmus test to compare it to. All right, 10 quick on target with the impact, and I'm gonna aim, what can I aim at down there? It's still not hit. Okay, I'm gonna shoot at the, uh, the, the middle, right-hand side, uh, T. <laughs> crosshair. 10 quick shots. I actually waited for a little bit of wind to come up to deliberately try to make the test as accurate. That was like 15 or 16 shots. So I think you see my point. Buy it for 30 yard out the window or down the river past whacking. Uh, don't expect more than that out of it. Think of it as a really kick-ass pistol and a compliment to the really good guns you already have. I'm betting that in 22 caliber, this little fella probably shoots more accurately and longer range. So um, maybe uh, when I get my gold one in, uh, I'll opt for the 22. Then do a comparison side by side. Price tag for this little fella, I think, is around uh, fifteen hundred, fourteen hundred dollars. So um, no, it's not a not a cheap toy, that's for sure. Is it worth it? Shut up and take my money. But I really can't tell you. Uh, there's nothing else like it, so there's nothing to compare it to. <laughs> um, uh, as for me, I'm gonna keep mine. I'm gonna hang on to it. Reason being is there's nothing else I have that fills that niche. That gun's pretty clever. Uh, rather than try to make a better gun within a given niche, they just make a new niche. <laughs> if you're looking at this gun, I hope it helps you. If you weren't looking at this gun, you don't even care. I hope you were at least entertained. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.